Okay, good afternoon guys. My name is Steve Ruffley. Welcome to another live trading clinic. We'll just go through the um, the usual risk warning, etc. before we get started. But today's uh, webinar is going to be all about how to stop or avoid getting uh, stopped out in the FX market. So just markets in general. So a few tips and techniques I've picked up along the way. Markets are a little bit choppy today before uh, Yellen speaks. So uh, plenty to go through. For a start, as always, there is warning. Remember, the spread betting is CFD trading power, highly risk or capital, and filtered losses that exceed your initial deposit. Maybe two for everyone to so please ensure you fill in on the risk involved. The information is provided here under no circumstances considering offer solicitation and best. Nothing here is can be used in investment advice. Information provided is believed to be accurate the data you choose. Again, education only. Content of the webinar is posted by any of the moderator, not trend.com. Content is not contributed to financial investment or tax advice. Trend.com is likely to accept any liability of the content of the during the session. What we're going to go through, as always, live charting analysis as it happens. Multiple time frame trading, very important when you talk about managing stops for your entry points, your exit points, uh, and just general trading. If you're only ever looking at one time frame, it becomes very, very difficult. Fundamental analysis, for a bit of that uh, around at the minute, obviously with the non prime payrolls, worse than expected. Uh, very, very strange day for the markets, that indeed. Um, again, I'm sure non prime payroll bought some gold, bought some gold lower down. End up getting out for a minuscule loss, uh, and then gold rallied, but very, very difficult to trade that. Very, very, very tough market conditions. See anything good today? I'll put a live money trade on. I've always got my account open. And Q and A. Remember, the guys, these are these are open sessions. Anything you want to ask me, you know, say any comments, any product you want to go through, just ask me. You know, that's what that's what I'm here for to help you guys out. You've got unparalleled access to me, and uh, again, you know, just just ask me anything you want. You want to go through any specific scenarios, maybe you traded this morning, I got stopped out. Tell me the products, we'll go through it and see if we can analyze and help you out. So I've got a selection of uh, of currencies up at the minute. Got the dollar Swiss, got the uh, pound versus the dollar, uh, euro dollar and the Aussie dollar. Bit of a random just kind of mix, just to kind of see exactly um, you know what the market is doing right now and where we can get involved. So the first thing I'm trying to kind of put across is that what you need to be looking at is the right kind of time frame to get an idea of where, where the market's going. Okay, so take take um, cable, for, for instance, got the pen against uh, the dollar here. We can see that on the hourly chart, we've been in a fairly tight range. Now, you can see that from the Bollinger Bands, the blue lines. Okay, and we finally broke out to the upside. So a lot of people would have got short here. Just elaborate on that. A lot of people got short here because that's like a, almost like a double top. Okay, so the market is pushed out aggressively from the moving average. Okay, but then again, look like we're going to close within the Bollinger Bands, leaving these two pin bars. Now, these are the kind of things you need to look out for because time and time again, when you see the pin bar, yeah, it, it offers a reversal in the market. Okay, so at the bottom of the Bollinger Band here, the market breaks all the way down to this weekly and daily level of support, then at 126.2 and 126.2529. The market can't close down here. So it closes inside the Bollinger Band. The next candle is then green, opens inside the lower um, boundary, and then looks to hit the, the, the moving average. You know, and within three candles of rejecting that move lower from this big down move here, we've got to the upper end of the Bollinger Band. You can see how they work again, triple top. Yeah, they're not exactly in line, but three times the market's tried on the hourly chart to get out, you know, to get the, the, the short term, push the market higher. Close within the Bollinger Band, then the market moves back down, back to the moving average. And that's the same kind of scenario you, you see here. The majority of people will be getting themselves short, okay, the, and, the, and these wicks, especially here in this body, expecting the market to get to the moving average, probably break back down to this 50% fib level here, a 1, 2, 6, 4, or 1, 2. And then probably towards the lower end of the Bollinger Band. And it hasn't done that. Okay, so we've seen this, this kind of the market gets squeezed here, and the market's open, and it's pushed all the shorts out of the market. So these kind of things you need to be looking for in the right kind of time frame. So for me personally, I would always look uh, for direction, for momentum, for movement on the hours. Because an hour is enough time for, for a lot of uh, trading events, a lot of technical analysis, a lot of fundamentals, all to filter through to the market. Okay, so. We can see that the market's consolidated, you know, tried to test the lows, you know, again, hasn't really closed outside the lower Bollinger Band, but then hasn't made any real attempt until we get to here to, to, to push higher, you know, to make this move higher. So when all the kind of 
majority of short day traders and you know hourly traders, 15 minute camel traders, and thinking. I mean, again, we look at this in a small time. Frame. You see that you know the market, although that looks fairly bullish, you know, you're expecting a bit of a more of an overreaction in the market to get back into these in you know, these value areas here. But it's not. We've seen small candle, small candle, small candle. Finally, looks like, you know, again, we've made a high, high in the 15 minutes. Looks like the market's going to come back to the moving average, but it doesn't. Moves higher and gets everybody out. So that's on the hourly time frame. So what I'd recommend doing is having, like, your hourly time frame up. And, again, we're trading way above, you know, key FIB levels here. You know, we, we, the market's moving aggressively higher. What it's always good to do is have a smaller time frame chart. Not too small, so I wouldn't recommend doing tick data. I certainly wouldn't recommend doing minute charts. But maybe your 50-minute or your 5-minute charts. And you get to see how these candles are made up. So that same move that we've seen, okay, the market, again, I don't put anything like Bollinger Bands on. I don't put anything apart from the overall kind of, you know, upper time frame um, support and resistance. Just so you can see from the movement. So the market really kind of, again, you see a lot more green candles than red. And the red candles that you see are tiny bodies. And that just means there's more momentum. <clears throat> so while there's bigger green candles than there are selling candles, the market's still liable to break out. So again, we've seen this double top, you know, kind of formation, this level of, of resistance here at one spot, six, four, six, seven, eight. So again, you've got to get people thinking, well, how far really can cable keep going up? You know, the market can't keep pushing up. Well, it could easily push up to one, six, four, eight, two, three. We've got nothing really above that until one, six, six, oh, three, zero. So what you're looking for when markets are, are breaking out and you're looking to avoid getting stopped out is to go to the extremes of what you think can happen. So in this scenario right now in the five minutes, it looks like the market's going to sell off. So what you'd look to do is put your stop if you're going short above 164823 because that's the next logical place the market can potentially squeeze any shorts out of the market. So if you're not taking a trade now and going short, you've got to be able to go at least 17, 18 ticks offside. So then you have to have a reasonable target point, which is this next key level of daily resistance down here, which acts as support as well, which is 164420. So that's 22 ticks or a one to one trade or your next kind of point of, you know, decent short term resistance, which is a five minute trend down here, which is 46 ticks away. So the fact of the matter is a lot of people will be long again, depending on their bias. In this trend, because, you know, this is just a small five minute nice trend. You know, the market hasn't actually retraced a great deal in order to get you stopped out of the trade. So for now, the only down move we're going to see is profit taking. When we see profit taking and, and people holding on to trades, you don't see continual red candles because this is obviously a bull trend. And you don't see, you know, these kind of reversal patterns working. So the market's happy to find support and it's happy to find buyers. So, again, what you could see potentially is that, yes, we know that uh, you know, the market has heavily opened. Um, uh, let me just go back to the and show you. We can see the market is sold up, heavy, or bought up heavily for an hour, and we've reached this point of, of daily resistance. So we've got every opportunity for the market to get back down. But, again, what you'll see is, is these times, again, that people will get short expecting to break back into the Bollinger Band and come back from moving average. What will happen is the, the Bollinger Band will act, actually act as, as resistance. So the market will come back down or reject, you know, a, a break back into this range here and then test higher. So again, everybody will be getting short, expecting, right, big green candle. You know, the market's closed outside the eye of the Bollinger Band. We know the majority of the time it will come back in. Well, it probably will, but it's not to say it's going to happen right now. So quite easily, you could see the market on these five minute or these hourly test these upper levels before the market goes down. So if you want to show your charts up, then you can do different things. What I would say is um, use some other indicators to kind of show it up. So we're looking on the hourlies yet again in cable. And you can see we've got the RSI and the D marker indicator. Now these are pretty simple indicators. Everyone can use them. They just work on the 70-30 principle. But above 70 is overbought, below 30 is oversold. So just put that onto your charts. So you can see the demarcation indicator. Again, we've, you can see how the market follows them as well. Low, okay, not below the 50, but below the halfway mark. Market goes up here. Again, RSI, 
very, very similar. But what you're looking for is the peaks and the troughs. You're looking for the market to kind of tell you that it's overbought, tell you it's oversold, it's ready for that reversal, because that's when the power and momentum will come back in. So right now, we've rejected the lows, we've rejected the, the, the midpoint in the RSI, so we've still got strength in the market. Just because we've hit the 70 doesn't mean it can't go higher. I mean, back here, we were back to 79 in the relative strength index. So it isn't as clear that, yes, we're in the above the 70 now, the market now is going to come down. It will do. Of course it will do. But the element of doing this is timing. When we're at the top of the market, as we see a lot of times in commodities, things like gold, we'll be trading above here and we'll see a big spike up in the RSI or the D marker, knowing that people will be short, pushing them out straight line in a 30, 40, 50 tick move. And that's when everyone's going, why is this happening? They don't understand. In 15 minutes, it's closed back within the range and coming back down. But all the short-term day traders, all the people you know, that only have a small risk-reward strategy can't let something go 10, 15, 20 ticks in a straight line. That's when you see these moves. They're aggressive, they're quick, but then they leave the telltale sign. They leave these wicks here, and the trading body then returns. So right now, I could say that, yeah, we're at, we're at a good level in cable. I'd think about going short. All the big traders, all the rest of the market participants, people have real clout are saying, well, the RSI is at 70. The marker, you know, ready for a, a, a bear reversal at 73. So what we'll do is for the next hour, we'll do nothing but buy the market up. We'll make a high. We'll push all the shorts out of the market. Everybody will, will average in, get short at this level here, 164823. Nothing above that. We're not going to be able to have the power to push the market 130 ticks. So just make it uncomfortable. We'll push people around to this resistance point here, 164925. Uh, Once we've done that, we'll close aggressively. We'll, we'll create that wick down to here. Then we'll close round about the level where everybody wants to get short. Then we'll overextend the market, hit it really hard and push it through these levels down to here. So that's the kind of mentality you have to think about. Now, it's not... Trying to constantly preempt shifts in the market and preempt markets being pushed, manipulated. It doesn't exist that much, but markets have a way of being cruel. So we might all be able to go short here at this good level at 16464, you know, we're, we're just trading right now. And maybe only two or three times out of ten, the market will extend through and push people out. But when all the currencies, are acting, you know, you know, with big solid moves. You know, we've seen a big, you know, amount of selling in the in the dollar against the Swiss. That's giving you the indication that maybe everything's not exactly as it seems. Obviously, we've got Yellen due to speak, which is some more fundamental data that might uh, kick in. But that's not to say she said anything or she will say anything. What it's meaning is there's jitters in the market. The more jitters there are, the more volatility there is, the less size there is. So the the more the market is free to move in these big candles. And that's what you need to look for when you're trying to manage your stock, okay? Is there enough buyers and sellers in to, to save me, to protect me? Because if there's not, then all these levels on the upside are just targets, you know, for, for the volatility cut to come into the market, to push you through levels, to get you out of your trade, and then do exactly what you know it's going to do, go short. Now, we've seen from history that the market can't push out of the upper Bollinger Bands forever. It has to come back and test the moving average. So we know at some point the moving average is our target because we're so overextended from the high. You know, back to that moving average is 52 ticks. But, again, as I say, with showing you the D marker and, and the, the RSI, we're right at the top. So when we're at the top, that's when you've got the most volatility and the most room for the market to be pushed without being able to do anything about it. So not going to say we're going to see the market, you know, blip up 20, 30 ticks to get all the shorts out. But I would say I'd be very wary about going short now around these levels because, yeah, absolutely. It could just drop like a stone now within two candles. We're back at the moving average. But these are the danger areas. This is why people get stocked out, because after a big move, people expect a big retracement back. And what you generally get is a smaller, more quick, aggressive move to, to get the remaining shorts out of the market, because we all know it's going to go short at some point. Nothing can continually go up without retracing, because people have to take profit, and obviously, the market finds value. So, realistically, the market, you know, again, we could do our Fibonacci, okay? The market starts with the up move here, so that's the high. So, again, 
50% would be the bottom near enough, you know, and the midpoint of all these four candles. So for, in order for that to come down to 50%, we've got 28 ticks. So there's nothing to say it can't move 28 ticks on the upside before it then moves down. So that's the way you've got to look at these things, and that's why you've got to put into your own kind of trading plan. What's the likelihood in this candle? You know, cable's going to come back to the 50% without it trying to test this top and make a high and push some shorts out of the market. Okay, panel five is asking a question. What do you think Yellen will say and what she will do before 3 p.m.? Uh, yeah, I mean, of course it matters, uh, panel five. I mean, this is fundamental news. Um, when the markets are quiet and not trading technically, they're trading fundamentally. You know, you have to go back to my uh, my trading rule, my 80-20 rule, that 80% of the time the market is trading technically, but 20% of the time people are, are craving this fundamental data. Okay, Barclay shares dropped 7% this morning. I had Reuters journalists on saying, have you seen anything? Well, they're always searching for that fundamental data. Sometimes it is just technical. You know, just, you know, with the fact that Barclays came out and said they were up in the bonus pool probably didn't go down too well in the markets. That's why they were down 7%. But a lot of the time, you know, the, 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 the people that, that make the news will be looking for a real reason that somebody said something, there's been some earnings, you know, but sometimes markets just move technically. Well, as I said, 80% of the time the market is technically. So when you're seeing these heavily overbought and oversold territories, that's when you have to be looking to get involved. So what will Yellen say today? Well, I think what she'll try to do is, I was writing another piece again today, just, just coincidentally, and I kind of compared the US economy to a massive juggernaut, you know, commanded by Captain Bernanke. It's such a big thing that it doesn't really matter what Yellen says. You know, she can't stop it. You can't just weigh anchor in and, and stop the US economy. And certainly you can't just do a U-turn and, and, and you know, and, and maneuver this huge, massive, you know, quickly moving vessel. So what she's going to say, hopefully, is what she plans to do over the term of her, uh, her course in office, but how she's going to release things to the market. The market's a jittery because people don't know what's happening. Okay, we've got no firm ideas on when interest rates are going to rise. We all know they will rise, but we don't know when. And we know the quantitative easing has been taken away, but we don't know when it's going to stop. So all the things that Ben Bernanke's done to keep the ship afloat and, and moving forward, now what Yellen has to do is to bring things into the market in a responsible manner. So we can't have any more mystery. You know, the markets can't keep guessing. We see this fluctuation in, in the stock markets, you know, the currency markets, in the bond markets. Because people don't know. They're taking speculation. But Yellen has to come out and give some proper forward guidance. She has to say, this is what I'm going to tell the markets. This is when I'm going to tell them. And this is how we're going to run the show from now on. Not this boom and bust, will we, won't we? Because that's just not good for, for any part of the economy. And remember, you know, the economy is made up of such complicated facets. Big hedge funds, you know, central banks, private investors. We, we, we need to know the rules of the game we're playing in, and that's down to the ECB, down to Mark Carney. You know, it's, it's down to, you know, from the, from the Bank of England, down to Yellen now from the Fed, to give the market a sure, clear indication of what is going to happen on a, on a manageable time frame. So you can see on, on cable now, it just doesn't look like the market wants to come back down. So people that will be getting short will be getting jittery. So it's much more likely, uh, as, as this hourly candle progresses, that we're going to make a high before we make a low, okay? So, yes, I think absolutely uh, a safe pair of hands is what we're looking for. Uh, and it's not just a safe pair of hands because anybody who takes the reins, you know, is going to be fairly responsible, we would hope, you know, at this level. But uh, the, the, thing, the main thing we're trying to get is this clarity, you know, this, this, this forward guidance and... Trying to, you know, not trying to be cloak and dagger anymore. You know, the markets are too complex. The markets are too, um, too vicious to to be able to just be purely led on speculation. So what we have to do is, is understand that no matter what is said uh, by Yellen, that it's going to be understood. It's going to be communicated to the markets in the right way, and, it, and it's going to be clear. The steps are going to be clear on interest rates, quantitative easing, and, and the Fed's policies moving forward. Okay. So. Getting back to the charts, here we have another one. You know, the dollar uh, against the Swiss. We've seen it, you know, break through these Fib levels. So we've got a big Fib level target down here, the uh, the, the four two three spot six. So again, we're moving downwards in the Bollinger Bands. 
So it, it, it looks that we're trying to get short. We've got some, some big, you know, kind of targets of all these bottoms here in, in the dollar versus the Swiss. Once they're broke, then the market really has nowhere to go to until 89 and 88, around about this 423. So look how it progresses and how it builds up on the five-minute charts. I mean, again, you've, you've got the, these... These, these higher time frames put in for you, you know, the same ones you see on the hourly. So when you see the market like moving lower, you know, again, you want to jump in. You want to jump in. And I know it sounds kind of difficult to do, but sometimes you just have to press the button, okay? You just have to press the button to get short here and know that the market will, you know, kind of waver. It will come back to the, you know, the, the, the low end of the Bollinger Band, but then it will, it will gradually get down. Because what you won't be able to do is sell it when it's down here, okay? If I'm telling you, that the market has got the potential on the hourly chart to go down another 40, 53 ticks. Well, then when it gets down 20 ticks down to here, the trouble is you won't be able to sell it. And all people, the rest of the people in the market won't be able to sell it. They're looking to buy it because we're outside the Bollinger Bands now and how far down can it go? Well, we already know where it's going to go. But the trouble is, it's too hard to sell something when it's already started moving. So the whole point of trading is preempting that the market now has closed below the moving average twice. Double top here on the hour is broke through support, broke through the support. So although it looks like it could quite easily, you know, come back into the range and down, more likely it's going to test these, these bottoms here in the market. And then when we start selling, it's going to be very difficult for people to find buyers. So the market is going to continue to go down. So look how that kind of, you know, will work out on your five minute chart. Because the more red candles you see, and you see more red than green, the more likely it is that the short-term sellers are going to push the market further down before the big long-term buyers find that bottom. Okay? Now, we can see that the, the dollar is losing traction against the Swiss. And at the same time, we see the euro is gaining against the dollar. Okay? So further pressure upwards in the dollar is going to push the dollar Swiss down. Again, as I say, the pound's gaining traction against the dollar as well. It's much more likely we're going to get towards these upper levels than the lower levels. You know, we've already made a high, only by a tick, but, you know, these things, generally, the momentum in the markets will still be up. And again, people will be getting short because we're outside the Bollinger Bands in the hours, so constantly people are getting out of positions now. People are going, oh, well, no, I don't want to stay short now, so I'm out. And as, you, as you're getting out, you're buying the market if you're already short. As simple as that. So look at that. We'll look on the five-minute charts. Again, we're hitting these tops. You know, you do see a lot more volatility in the five-minute charts. And we know the selling will come in at some point. But again, you're looking for your stops. Your stop has to be somewhere manageable. And it depends how long you hold trades for. It depends how aggressive you are. But I certainly would put my stop above this level here. Got a nice, obvious target point, you know, back to these levels down here that we said. And these are the same on the five-minute chart. Um, got more, a few more questions. I don't like... I don't think it's the end of the cloak and dagger for a while yet, Steve, unfortunately. Well, I mean, Joe, I mean, I'm talking about best case scenario. You know, Yellen's going to have to, she's got an, an opportunity to say how she's going to the run, the, the tongue tied eh? She's got a chance to say how she's going to run the Fed, Fed and what she's going to do. I'm not going to say she's going to come out and lay a perfect timetable and say we're going to reduce quantitative easing by 10 billion um, every Fed meeting and interest rates are actually going to go up by the, the third quarter in 2014. I'm not expected to say that. Nobody in government says that. John claude Trichet never said that. You know, people are, and different figures in, in you know, all facets of the, uh, the you know, the, the kind of uh, policymakers and the people in charge never come out and just say things. So, yes, I don't think it's in the cloak and dagger, but I think the forward guidance is something that has to be addressed. You know, we, we can't keep the markets in a perpetual state of uncertainty and volatility. And no matter what happens, we've reduced quantitative easing by 20 billion. Simple as that. So the Fed have already told us what they're doing. And once you start on that course, it's very difficult to stop. So if she doesn't come out and say something remotely, you know, kind of helpful to the markets, then, you know, we could see, you know, we could see, you know, a lot of negative effects. We could see a lot of weakness in the dollar. We could see a lot of, you know, big sell-offs in the stock markets. And that's what they're trying to avoid. So it's not in their interest to always continue with the cloak and dagger because the, 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 the more fear they breed and the less certainty they put through the markets, then the more things are going to be affected. And, you know, the Fed's job, you know, really is to keep stability. So if they keep with the cloak and dagger, then unfortunately the stock market is going to start to fall, pick up momentum and, and crash again. 
and that's certainly what they don't want. So, not for me to say what she will say, what she won't say, but she has to say something. Okay, it's as simple as that. Yeah, Yellen should do as she's told. Well, she's a new girl, unfortunately, so she's new to the job. You know, it's like Moyes when he took over from Alex Ferguson, United. You don't just step into the big boy's shoes and get to do exactly what you want. You know, these things take time. So, we have to remember, we're just dealing with people here. None of these people are anything amazingly special. They're just people. They have high-powered jobs and they're very clever, but they're just people. Okay, so you don't expect anything to change overnight. You don't think anything to be, you know, fixed, you know, with a, with a wave of a hand or a wave of a wand. But what is going to happen is something is going to have to be said, because that's what the market dictates. So it might be something weak, and it might be something that's, you know, particularly not transparent, but she'll say something. I guarantee that. Okay. So, John, good to see you. Greenspan had a great quote. If I understood what I said, then you're not listening close enough. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right, John. Um, you know, these people are past masters of uh, uh, being able to, you know, all politicians, you know, are uh, being able to give news to the market without it having an effect. But the trouble is the market's too smart, mate. People like us, people like myself, other traders know how to interpret what they say. You look under, you know, you look in between the words and, and the meanings, you know, for, for the for the kind of, for the unspoken words that they say. It's more what they don't say than what they say sometimes. But, I mean, this whole conjecture. I mean, the markets obviously are taking this that something's going to be said that, you know, that's not particularly great. You know, maybe quantitative easing, you know, is, is the path they're on. And that's why we're seeing weak, weakness in the dollar and strength, you know, in, in the euro and the pound and the, and the Swiss. You know, maybe, maybe that's the reason. Again, it's all pure speculation. Nothing's been said yet. Nothing's been rumoured to be said. So we don't know. But the fact of the market is, the, the, well, the fact of the matter is, the market's, you know, moving against the dollar. And we, we can see that, you know, it's quite easy for us to, us to see. But on the other hand, you know, the market's looking quite strong. You know, the US up 57 points, you know, the techs are up uh, 114, UK and Germany up both heavily. So, again, it doesn't really, you know, paint a, a picture that anybody knows what's happening. But with the, the fear, the uncertainty comes volatility. That's all I can tell you. Avoid getting stocked out. Don't put things in capitals to me, okay? Don't shout at me. You know, I'm not I'm not here to, to, to be barked at. You know, I'm, I'm I'm too long in the tooth for that kind of stuff. I've told you one example about stop, how to get stocked out. You know, that's by trading the higher time frame with a smaller time frame view. Tell me, tell me what product you trade to stop getting um, stopped out here. What, what, what product are you trading, Buki? Let's go through your example. And, and, and your product that you trade, you get stopped out. All right, well, Forex. Four trillion dollars you trade in the Forex market. Be a bit more specific. I can't just tell you to get stopped out on every single bit of Forex. I'm going to have to show you an example, okay? So you have to pick out a currency per for me to go through for you so we can, we can explain to you how you need to stop getting stopped out of positions in currency. Okay, I've gone through the pound. And I've told you, if you want to go short in the pound, I think it's going to go down. But it's not going to go down until it's touched here. So you have to set your stop above that. Okay? No, Manjo, I don't think there's any particular news uh, that I heard of for the pound to get pushed up higher. But um, certainly, um, you, you can see that the, the, the weakness in the dollar has certainly led to some strength in the pound. Uh, and that sometimes, the, you know, the coefficient are more important in the FX markets. You know, how currency pairs trade against each other, that when people are taking big, longer-term positions, rather than just individual spikes in currencies. So I'd say there definitely is you know, a correlation with the dollar selling off against the Swiss and the pound gaining some traction against the dollar. Uh, I didn't hear anything across the wires that gave me any other reason to, to think why that happened, to be honest. <clears throat> yeah, it's always interesting for us, Gal. Uh, always good to see you. How the uh, the markets trade on different views. So you know, you can see that the market is heavily, you know, down on the hour, and we see a little bit of relief here on the five minute. But you can see how it's built up. That really, you don't want to go long in the market just yet because you're seeing a lot more downward movement on the five minute chart. So again, you know, we might push back up to this level here in the in the in the five minute chart. You know, this blue resistance line. But after that. The downward momentum could continue, and we actually find that isn't, you know, support anymore at all. It's resistant. The market comes down. So as we're making lower lows in the five minute, you know, we, we, if that ties up with the lower lows and the higher time frame, the hours, then the market's got plenty of room to move downwards. 
So it's just another way of being able to stay in trades. Okay, as long as you don't make significant highs. Okay, we'll see. We put a bit of a spike though. We go to the 30 minute. Oh, okay, well, there's a bit of spike in general, guys. Massive spike in the euro dollar. Okay, so massive spike in the euro dollar. Not sure if anything's come across the wire yet. So just be careful here. Big, big spike in the uh, in the dollar. Okay, be careful here, guys. Obviously, something has come out. Big, big spike in the dollar Swiss. Okay, so look. Look at this this, this euro dollar in the five minutes. A big, big gap now. You know, and again, see how you know, there's a gap on the five-minute chart. And that's a big... Uh, you know, a big kind of gap here on the uh, on, on the hourly charts. So again, be very very wary. Again, big big spike in the dollar versus the Swiss. We'll just see what uh, what data has come out just now. Um, I wasn't expecting any data just yet. Has anyone really heard anything through on the wires, guys? Has anything come through? Again, look at this big big, big spike in the Aussie dollar now. So, uh, some definite good news has come out. Yeah, let's just go to the equities and see what's happening here, guys. Okay, one second, guys. It's obviously a lot of, uh, lot of volume going through. One second. Okay, so gold, gold's taking a bit of a bit of a, a, a hit down there. That, that, you know, it's only the currencies really that have been been hit. Nothing particularly else has uh, has seen to move. We've seen gold coming down now. We're seeing a bit of a weakness, and the tops coming to the DAX and the FTSE. Um, oh right, okay. So yellow signal that she's going to continue with Bernanke's policy. Well, I don't think that's a real surprise to the market, is it? It seems that the currency have taken it that way. But I mean. Bernanke's, you know, policy is just that really, you know, we're going to continue the quantitative easing while easing while, well, you know, and cutting that back while the market can sustain it. So, you know, I think it's probably see would have expected to see that, that certainty if that is the comment that, that the news and the markets are reacting to. That the markets, certainly the stock markets, will push higher. Uh, yeah, interesting. Hmm. Okay. Um. Yeah, recovering the market is still not complete. Uh, 6.5% the threshold won't matter. Still hold rates low. Yeah, well, I mean, that's where you've got to be careful of these kind of you know, things that come into the market very quickly. You know, this is nothing new that, that that nobody doesn't know. I mean, as I said, you know, Yellen's not going to come in and say, you know, a whole new manifest. She's not going to do a whole sweeping statement about you know, how she's going to change the complete tax. You can't just stop. What's been put in place? You can't just say, right, well, I'm going to go back to quantitative easing and pump in another, you know, 20 billion into the economy every month. You can't say that. So that's when you've got to be, again, I mean, that's, that's the spikes we saw in the, in the markets and especially the currency markets that were very overextended. We've seen very little reaction in, in the DAX, very little reaction in the, in the, in the, um, uh, in the FTSE and gold. Again, it's coming back down, but I mean, again, we've got a great level here at one, you know, 282, uh, in gold. So, I don't know. I mean, I'd be more likely to buy gold down here than I would be to sell into it off the back of them comments, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, the tapers continue. That's great. I mean, that is good news. I mean, it's good news. If, if, the, if the Fed and, and Yellen thinks that they can carry on tapering quantity and bring it back and the U.S. is, you know, self-sustaining, then that's really good news. That means, that, you know, the economy is going to be stronger than we thought. So, again... Seeing gold push down, we've got some good levels here at 127820, 1279 is, is a big level in gold. Bit of weakness now coming into the, into the UK, coming into the stocks. Again, I mean, these, sometimes these correlations get a bit mixed up. I mean, so if you've got to avoid getting stopped out now, for instance, then, you know, your stop's going to have to be where, where the volatility started. So go into a smaller time frame, go into your 15 minutes, okay? And then see, you know, what, where, you know, where the move started. So, you know, you want to put your stop above these highs here. Okay. So the market can come all the way back there. We want to put your stops up here. You don't want to be getting, you know, you want to get short and stay short because this would be your target. Okay. Because these are your levels down here, 166, 150. But your stop would have to be where this move really started. So you have to be brave and hold on. 
know that if you've got short in the stocks now, you've got realistically 10 tick stop, you know, for a 25 tick profit. And again, you have to wait for that 15 minute to close and then you're to be able to hold on. Gold, again, difficult. I wouldn't really want to be selling gold right now. Uh, it's a shame we moved off the currencies to when you see gaps, you know, we'll, we'll go back to that in a minute because the gaps will generally get filled. And again, it, you have to remember that news takes time to filter through. But these comments or these rumours or whatever's come through from Yellen, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, until she actually speaks and, you know, she does the Fed meetings, nothing really is, is concrete. You know, again, this is just rumour and speculation and, you know, newswire reporting. It's not exactly as solid as, you know, Yellen coming out and saying something as head of the Fed, okay? Um, Drew's asking, where exactly do you put um, your stops as a percent? Well, I mean, again, I'm trying to keep to a 2 to 1, 3 to 1 risk reward ratio. So if you're looking to make 25 ticks, then, you know, you want to be risking 10 ticks realistically, okay? So, again, be, be careful in these markets. You know, again, I'm saying if you want to stay short, you've got to stay short. But uh, if you're trading off this fundamental news, as somebody's just said, the dollar's, you know, uh, retracing now. So when things move and spike very, very quickly, then it's not a good sign for me. So you're not really going to be trading. If you're trading that rumour, you're trading them quotes from Yellen or, or from the news wires, then that's already in the market now. So that can be seen as people going the opposite direction. So as I said, I wouldn't really want to be selling gold if that's come off on the back of that. I wouldn't really want to be selling the stocks if it's come off the back of that. What I'd be looking to do is close gaps and go with the initial direction of the market. So, yeah, I mean, it's always difficult when you, when you, you know, you, you get unexpected news that kind of mess up the kind of fundamental and kind of trading picture that you're trying to balance things off. So, the, the market generally will settle. The market will kind of, you know, again, come back. We'll just go back to what we were looking at before, the... Uh, the currencies, I mean, what you'll see is that the gaps get filled. So on the five-minute chart, you see it better. So the market opened up here, came back here and is continuing down. Again, a good level in the pound versus the dollar to buy in that five-minute. So all gaps have closed. That, that's what generally always happens. If you see any kind of spike in data, but you can't see that on the hours, can you? You just see a big move. You only get to see it on the five-minute chart. So that's what I say. It's always good at looking uh, you know, different time frames because you get to see things you wouldn't. So you didn't see that five, that gap on the five minutes, the, you know, because you wouldn't have seen it on the hourly because you've already got that candle open. But you would have seen it on the five minute. You have a quick opportunity to close that gap. But then the overall move continues down. So obviously, the, you know, the euro now is, is kind of reversing these gains and has been hit heavily. So everyone that was short is staying short. Everyone that was long is out of the positions. So you're going to get this turbulence now where people are constantly getting in and out of position until the overall trend continues. Okay? Yeah, for us, Cal, I mean, I'm waiting for, until the market, until the US opens, really, to be honest. I mean, you know, that like gap's gone now. The opportunity's gone. You could have quite easily bought, uh, you know, when the market opened here and that closed. You could have made 20 ticks pretty quickly out of it. But then as quick as you can make it, the market then has come back down and hitting the lows. So this is real quick fire scalping trading opportunities i'm trying to teach you guys and trying to give you guys the ability to stay in trades and manage trades for a little bit longer and again we do that by having an hourly bias and we're setting our targets and our stops around the hours and then trying to trade the smaller time frame in order to be able to get out of positions uh, uh, and, and you know to get on the back of these positions and be able to ride them a little bit longer okay uh, and that's how you're going to make money. You know, it, it, to be honest, you know, if you want to stay in the game, you want to stay in trading for any kind of length of time, then you have to be, you know, trading four or five times a day with a good stop loss ratio of, of what of you know, three to one, four to one, five to one, and that means you have to be able to ride your trades, you know, for that five times what you put in your stop, and that's how you make money trading. It's not by, you know, so-called scalping and getting in and out 20 times a day. You don't, you don't have direct market access. All you're doing is making your broker a lot of money, okay? You can trade four or five times a day, calmly, controlledly, you know, with some kind of good risk management in place. Make just as much as you could if you traded 50 times a day, okay? I, I, I promise you this. I assure you this. Okay, so in the five minutes now, that spike down here, you know, the market is looking to get back up to value. 
and everything really is just kind of getting back to parity now. So the opportunity to get involved in that initial spike and these gaps is gone. So what we have to do now is realistically focus back on the hourlies and see what can happen. Okay. So the hourlies now, we were expecting that the, uh, the penny as dollar was going to come down. It did make a higher high, like I said. But obviously, because of these comments and rumours, the market's now down. Now, I said this was going to be a good level at 16441. So it's either going to be one of two things, isn't it? We're going to break down through this level and get to the moving average because people are still selling the pound based upon this news and these comments. Or all the buyers are going to return into the market and go, well, the market was heavily bullish before that was said. It's not actually really big news to me, to be honest. The market's then going to continue to make a hot. So in the five minutes, that looks like that could be the case. Big pin bar here, can't break, double bottom here. So I'd expect the market realistically to start going back up. So all the people who were short and just trading that short term news and didn't really understand it, we're all going to get pushed out now. The overall trend that we saw on the back of no rumour, no data, no comments is now being filtered out. The market is now going to push up higher. So again, I mean, it just depends. I was reading what the um, the uh, Federal Reserve testimony that you uh, uh, that somebody kindly put up for me. You know, nothing, nothing's new here. You know, the monetary policy, there's nothing new. Strengthen the financial system. Yes, we know. You know, we knew that Yellen was going to be a safe pair of hands and he's fairly, you know, fairly dovish, but he's still very, very sensible that Ben Bernanke set the course for the US and you can't just change that overnight. So it's going to take time to filter through. So, yeah, them short term spikes are just day traders and, and big players of the markets, guys, liquidating positions and turning and reversing. That's all them spikes are. You know, see it in the Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar hit some key levels. There's more people buying than selling. All the smart money is already out. So people that were long anyway have just bought loads more position back at the 50%. You know, we've already nearly fully retraced that down move. Yeah, so what's going to happen in the in the dollar Swiss? Going to continue the down move. What's going to happen in the, you know, in cable? The up move. So all them spikes, all they're going to do is be filtered out by comments we already know, by things we've already kind of semi-predicted. So the overall trend is going to continue. You know, but again, it won't do it. It's going to take time because you've got people now fighting with each other, fighting with positions, fighting with them short-term trades. You know, again, when the market moves and spikes 20, 30 ticks in a straight line, you've got people caught that are wrong. Some big traders will average. Other small traders will get out. So you have to understand now who's right, who's wrong. You know, who's got the, the kind of the funds, the stops, the ability, you know, to carry on. And I'll say, as long as you don't trade below, this fifty, this daily level here, okay, this one six four four two. That the majority of people, what I would do, is continue to buy. What bank traders do will continue to buy, knowing that the trend will continue up. So they're buying more at value. So I put my stop here and start buying. And if it came back down to the range, I'd get out at one six four one nine one. Okay, but I expect it to make a fresh high. So you're looking at a, where we're trading now, a stop of ten to thirty ticks, expecting that. The top end is going to be hit for 30 ticks. So that's a one-to-one -one trade. But if you're already long, you'd be heavily averaging in. So you'd already have bought and be long up here. So just be buying more, expecting that new high to be made. So again, expecting new low to be made in the dollar, new high to be made in cable, and a new high to be made in the Aussie dollar. Simple as that. You know, you can't tell me reading through that testimony of what Yellen said, that's going to be anything that's going to be of a real surprise to the markets. It won't be, you know, again, we, you know, we've got the US S to, to, to open. We've got, you know, other things are coming, to, you know, coming, to, coming to the pack. But to be honest, these are just comments that everybody knew. You know, maybe it, 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 it brought some bigger traders, you know, to quickly liquidate positions. You know, we just don't know. But we're back, we're trading back to pretty much where we were. So again, it's like as if nothing really happened. Yeah, she speaks again on Thursday, absolutely. But the real meeting on the 19th of March, you know, that that's when we're really going to get, you know, what Yellen's all about. So, you know, there's nothing really, you know, massively important for Yellen until the 19th. Um, Drews is asking, so first you decide the target and then play stop based upon your desired ratio. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, Drew. I mean, again, it, 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 I always work off the fact that I've got a good idea where the markets are going. I don't always make money from that. I mean, generally... I'll know where a market's going, but then wait for it to get there and buy rather than sell or buy towards it. You know, sometimes you just don't have the confidence to go with the market and say, I can tell you that right now that, you know, let's pick some good levels that the, uh, the euro dollar is going to get to one, two, three, six, eight, eight, seven. But I might wait for it to get there and then sell it 
for, for 10, 15 ticks on a rebound rather than buy it now in this red candle and make three times the amount. Because you just don't know, do you? I mean, you just have to go with what you feel, what you think the market is likely to do and what the best value is. OK, so for me, sometimes I like getting to levels and then selling them levels rather than selling or buying to them. But if you know where the market's going to go, you know where to set yourself a reasonable stop. And that's the only way you can really work it, I would say, uh, the rough, that we all know that markets are going to go up or markets are going to go down. You know, we can generally call that between us, you know, on a, a daily basis or an hourly basis. The hard part is where to get in. OK, so I would say if you know where your out is, then you build your stop around that and you build your size around that because if it goes through one of your levels, so say you want to get short now, well, okay, well, you set your stop here and you set your stop here. So you get short, maybe you sell some more here, sell some more here, expecting the market to get back down. Always, I always think that the market's going to push me against what I know is right because I'm right nine times out of ten in trading. But I know the market will always push me when I get in because I'm going with the majority of signals of everybody else. So the market makes it harder for you to stay in trade when you first get in, you know, when you when you walk when you put your trade on, you walk away from the screen, it becomes quite easy because you put your stop in so the market can only do one or two things, go on side or stop you out. But when you're watching, you're constantly getting the market twitch, move back, move against you. And that's what stops people out, that confidence. You know, so what you want to look is the market on the five minutes or the fifteen minutes and the hourly. Because the hourlies will give you the confidence to stay in. Yeah, all the volatility you'll see is on the five minutes. But, you know, again, market's looking like it might go up red, green on the five minutes. However, it's still remaining red on the hour. Okay, so for the next 14 minutes, you know, as long as that stays red, you've got another good chance of the next candle opening on the hour is being red. So it's a balancing act, guys. It's, an, it's a real balancing. Um... Yeah, exactly. But you're exactly right, John. But I mean, we're talking about intraday trading. So, you know, until I was, you know, barked up by Buki, you know, I'm trying to explain to you that if you're trading intraday, you have to look at intraday candles. So you balance that between the hourlies, the 15 minutes and the five minutes. Um, if you just trade off the, the dailies and the weeklies, then you, you, you very rarely, you know, because you're fading out all that volatility, John, aren't you? So you, you very rarely kind of see them big moves because they take time, don't they, to come. But then... How often, John, do you hold trades for a weekly candle? How often do you get into your trade and then, you know, look for your next monthly target? It's very difficult. And I'd say that realistically, what we're trying to do is you make money from intraday trading. And therefore, you have to take into what's happening intraday, which will be hourly candles based upon smaller time frames. OK, so that's that. That's really how you make money, you know, four or five times a day is looking for these opportunities. So another one is let the 15 minute candle maybe retest this trend line or hold above 16442 and then let some strength come back into the market because the overall trend is up. So again, you could buy that 15 minute candle two or three times until it makes a new high. But again, you could only do that off, off the 15 minute or five minute candle. You couldn't do it based upon, you know, um, a weekly candle because it's too much information. Okay. So again, guys, it's, it's mixing up the time frames. It's mixing up you know, your entry and exit points in a, in a reasonable manner, okay, in a reasonable time frame. If you're a day trader, at some point you're going to have to look at 15-minute or hourly candles. You can't focus on the daily candles, even though you're an intraday trader, okay? The intraday trader or the, the, tr the intraday candle isn't relevant until it closes, and then that's the next day. So if you're focusing on what's happening intraday right now, it has to be a smaller time frame. So mix up an hourly and five-minute or 15-minute chart, and that will show you direction on the hourlies and then use the same levels on your hourlies on your 15-minute chart. And the more green candles you see if you're buying, good, stay long. The more red candles you see, stay short. And your stop needs to be placed around your hourly extremes on your levels. And that's how you'll avoid getting stopped out in the smaller time frames because you'll see what the bigger, longer-term traders are looking at. Because bank traders don't look at, at these small time frames. They look at the big time frames because they can hit bigger levels than we can. You know, if a bank trader wants to come in and push this 30 ticks up on the hourly, he can do. And then he can sell it all the way down back to here. So all the, all this is short here, and then all the rest of the market gets short here. And then he takes his profit. So it's looking for where the market can overextend on the higher time frames. Look out for that happening on the smaller time frames and place your stops around it. Okay? Good. Well, that's why I like Forex Gal, because she's always got something positive to say. 
and she gets it. So does Pan on Fire, so does John. You know, you guys are great, you know. It makes my job all the more worthwhile to have great people like you in my room. I, honestly, I really do appreciate it. So right now, these comments are in the markets. They're gone, okay? So I would say normal market, you know, conditions will continue. I would say that a lot of people now will still be looking to buy the pound and probably sell off, you know, highs in the dollar just because of that strong trend we saw before. But we'll have to see what happens when the US opens. Again, a lot more traders, a lot more volume coming in. Uh, and just that Yellen said she's going to continue what Bernanke did. Well, I don't really think that's any real surprise for the fundamentalists out there. We don't really expect anything major to happen uh, again until the 19th of March when she, um, you know, when, when she comes out and has a first you know, real kind of official Fed meeting. But then again, you know, on the five minutes, it's looking like a bit of weakness in the Aussie dollar. So maybe some levels to buy down here. Again, 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 guys, you know, there's no easy way of, of explaining these things. I can only tell you how I've learned things myself over the last 10 years and how I've taught people. Try and match up two time frames, and again, build your bigger picture. All right, guys, I'm pretty much over time here now. So uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to call that a day as uh we rightly said i've been a i am up for one of the awards uh, as best fx street presenter you know if you do feel like voting for me then i would be greatly appreciative of that don't think i'm going to win to be honest uh i've not got a bigger following of some of the other guys but you know again I, I come here i do what i can every week and i try and give you you know honest uh and the benefit of my education as i say you know it's it's not always easy and it's not always easy to kind of you know get everyone's questions right but no, again, we do uh, we do what we can here. Well, listen, thanks a lot to the guys at uh, FX Street, and uh, thanks to my regulars. Really appreciate uh, your comments, guys, and it's uh, been a pleasure. So uh, let's see what happens when the US opens, and uh, try and put the other uh, time frame, different time frame, into process, and uh, see if that helps you trading new stock. All right, guys, have a good afternoon. Take it easy. <laughs>